All right, we're there. Just take a quick breather because I'm going to get stuck into this in a sec. This, what I'm going to present to you, this 52 week, the first stage, and there's multiple stages. I'm going to present to you the first stage. We may not have time to go through the second stage or even approach the third stage, but we're going to get through the first stage in sort of the next 10 minutes really quickly. What I want to tell you about this stage is, is it's, it's, not a, it's not a one week thing, it's not a one hour thing, it's not a one month thing. It's nothing like, you know, go off alcohol for a month. It's, it's forever. It's forever. If you want to fix this and you think it's a climate emergency, all of the things I'm about to tell you, the 52 things that you do in year one, or even week one, you can do them all simultaneously if you want, they're forever. Okay? You ready? Yep. Green electricity. Just do it. Simple. Green electricity guide, you need some instructions. Support others to take action. And I generally direct my money at, at groups that take action, not groups that lobby and talk. Read your metres. If you don't know how your house works, you can't control it. Look at your bills, read your metres. Simple. Refill all your containers. Okay, you've got a container, refill it. Don't put it in the recycle bin, refill it. Boycott something. Or like me, boycott everything. Everything that causes harm to your world, the thing that you know and love and care about and cherish, boycott the companies and the people who are harming it. Protest. Stand up with others. Show people what you really care about. Tell people what you care about. Don't leave it, don't leave it at home. Tell them. Switch to green banking. Don't let anything stand in your way. If, you've got, if you, you're for one of those big dirty banks, move all your stuff. If it takes six hours, six days, six weeks or six years, get out of them. Because it sends a powerful message. If you do get out of them, make sure you tell them before, during and after why you did it. Don't just do it. Tell them why you did it. Say goodbye to supermarkets. Don't go to supermarkets ever again. And the reason don't go to supermarkets is because they don't give a shit. They don't care about you. They care about gambling, alcohol, tobacco and packaging. It's completely contrary to what we're trying to solve. Supermarkets don't work. If you're going to go to the trouble of recycling stuff, buy recycled stuff. If you think recycling is important, buy recycled stuff. Simple. Make your own food. You really care about your health and your body, Make your own food. Find out what ingredients are in the things that you're putting into your body, your precious, beautiful bodies. Yeah? Get rid of everything that you don't need. Declutter your entire house and your entire life. That not only clears up your house, it clears up your mind. These are important steps. Because if you're just surrounded by a mess, you won't be able to see your way through. Look after your body. Healthy people, fit people are more sustainable than the opposite. Okay? And it'll stand you in good stead for this challenge because it's going to go forever. Be free from chemicals. Clear your house entirely of chemicals. If you can't eat it, this is my rule, if you can't eat it or drink it, it doesn't belong in your home or your shed or your yard. Okay? The only cleaning products in my house are bicarb soda and vinegar. That's it. Take time out. It's not all hard work. You've got to slow down. Okay? To reflect on this stuff. Don't eat beef. This is really simple. You will have heard, you know, you will have seen all this kind of stuff on lists. You type in, in any search engine and you go, tell me, tell me some green tips. This will appear on just about every top ten list. Don't eat beef. And if you're still eating beef and you think it's a climate emergency, really? Live with five dollars a day or less. You can do that. That's all organic. That's my food for an entire week. Um, it's all organic. And if you're worried about organic stuff costing costing more, um, you can get started with easy stuff. I've never seen rice or oats, two of the staples, above five dollars a kilo. Yet burger rings, 
at um, Melbourne Central Station, $78 a kilo. Nobody complains about that. Stop flying. Unless, of course, you're solving world peace or coming up with, um, and when I say world peace, I mean peace with the environment. I don't mean peace between nations because we're at war with the environment right now. So I'll grant you a flight if that's, if that's the purpose of your mission. But don't fly to Bali if it's, even though it is $209. Say no to seafood. So you just got rid of beef a few weeks ago. Now you're getting rid of seafood. That's over. Divest your super. This is one of the most powerful acts you can take. You know, you might be able to spend ten dollars differently at, at various shops, but if you can grab your two hundred thousand dollars and move it, that says so much more. No more cans or bottles. None. Zero. That's over. If it comes in a can or bottle, you can't have it. Make your home efficient. So I was telling some people the other day. Uh, I was talking about solar panels. My house would only need one solar panel to power it for the entire year. One kilowatt hour per day. Stop buying new stuff. Just don't buy stuff. It's simple. Climate emergency, don't buy stuff. It stops it. Buy organic food. I mentioned that a few minutes ago. Switch off technology. I'm not saying be anti, no technology. Let's switch it off for most of your day. You don't need it, and it's not helping. There's good technology and there's bad technology. Technology will take you down a path you don't want to go. Oh, you've seen that shop before. Grow your own food. Or help others to grow it. And figure out where your food comes from. Measure your progress. So that's just electricity, gas, water, that type of information. If you really want to save water, well, you've got to measure it. The same as if you want to save money for your solar panels, you've got to measure your savings account. It's all pretty straightforward. Stop using your bins. Well, <laughs> we never have to worry about bin night at my house. <laughs> we don't have rubbish. There's the stuff we have that just goes out to the chooks or the compost. It's pretty easy. 50 litres of water a day per person. That's the first mark. I encourage people to go beyond there. Uh, if you grow veggies and stuff, you get a whole lot more because you're way more efficient than um, most of our agricultural friends if you can do it at home. So 50 litres. Uh, that's me just policing my letterbox there. Just, I don't get any mail at all. Nothing. And I still look in there, hopefully, every day. <laughs> nah, nothing, nothing, nothing. Anyway, easy. So if, you can, if you've got a house that suits solar panels, get them. Get as many as you can. Even like my house, it's a rental house, so it's not going to happen there. But one panel, but if, if you can afford 50 panels, get them. If you're not in that situation, buy green power. It does cost extra, but buy it. It's a climate emergency. Do something big. So my son came home one night and um, he was a bit upset about this whole climate emergency, just as I imagine many of you are. And I said, the cure. Like the cure for that feeling is to do something. So I had two no junk mail stickers lying around and we snuck out in the night and we stuck those up without asking for anybody's permission. And um, I know from previous surveys that'll, that'll stop 70 kilos of junk mail entering that letterbox. Well, those two, so that was 140 kilos. The next week I bought 3,000 stickers and my son and I went around and we put them up around the neighbourhood. And what we found was 50% of those no junk mail stickers survived on houses that previously had nothing on their letterboxes. Now switch that. Think about that. What would be an easier solution? Change one word in no junk mail. Just one word. Take one word away. What's the word? And you make it easier, simpler, much more effective and you save, us, you save us all the massive headache. What's the word? Yeah, who said that? Yeah, exactly. And so the people who want junk mail put the sticker up. And the people who want to deliver junk mail have to search for the stickers rather than the other way around. Can you see how much more powerful that is? Yeah? You see how that's a 180 degree idea? Flip it on its head. 
Made some trees. I've been playing with trees for decades. It's just me up the bush. Do something big. Um, I rode around at 3 a.m. in the morning and documented all the local businesses in my area that left their lights on and then wrote to them. There's about 54 of the ones. I took photos and wrote to them and said, turn your bloody lights off. It's um, 3 a.m. Simple. Stop. What, what I do, I, I don't pay attention to any news. I don't find it worthwhile, useful, or um, it just doesn't add anything to my life and I don't, don't think it adds much to any of our lives. I can switch on, uh, say, a news broadcast after two years without news and I'll be right back in the same spot. Nothing's changed. So if you can avoid news, avoid it. Make friends with nature. That's um, my son there. He's, uh, he's 19 now, so that was... He's probably three there, so that's probably 16 years ago. We were just collecting litter down near the Yarra. There's all kinds of stuff you can do and get involved. Write real letters. And I heard a, a comedian from the Melbourne Comedy Festival talk about this just recently. And um, he said, you know, Twitter, Twitter and Facebook make it really easy to get really angry really quickly and fire something off. But sometimes you don't think about that. That was Will Anderson, actually. Um, we saw him the other night. Uh, whereas this tempers your anger and controls it and makes it beautiful, heartfelt and loving. If you can go to the effort of getting out a piece of paper, an envelope and a stamp and writing down in your own handwriting and then walking to the post box, there's something powerful in that. Even if you're just writing to a friend to tell them how much you love them. You don't have to write to a politician because they, they'll send you something that's um, generic back. Stop eating meat. So we got rid of beef, we got rid of seafood, and now the weeks have rolled by and now there's no meat left. Do something big. Well, here's just another little example for you. Uh, I contacted every local government in Victoria to try and get them to stop using a particular herbicide. Okay? My goal was to get one of them to stop out of the 78. And that my goal was successful. Say goodbye to plastic. No more plastic. If it comes in plastic, don't buy it. Easy. Just don't buy it. Have another look at your car. There's my car. There's me in the traffic out there with my bike. Um, I've been riding my bike to and from work for 30 years. I, I think it's dangerous out there. We can't compete with these things. I didn't know that four-wheel drive with a big bumper bar was there behind me. That just happened to be in shop. That's, um, but get on your bike if you can, if it's safe to do so. But Melbourne is so crowded with cars and traffic and pollution that it is, it is a dangerous thing out there. And incidents and hazards pop up every single ride I go on out there. So, but if you can, get amongst it. Um, health and discipline. Always look after your health. And um, to do this requires an, an enormous amount of discipline. To devote yourself to the climate emergency and to carry out these things on a forever basis requires an enormous amount of discipline. You've got to go into your heart and think how strongly you feel about this and how much you want to, you want to correct those things that we all care deeply about. You know? So even if you go away from tonight and you just sit for a couple of weeks, sit with it, even a couple of months, sit with it and think, think about how you really feel about this and what you really want the outcome to be. Um, this will guide you through. It's, it's discipline. Okay. Learn new stuff. Always learn new stuff. Be open to new ideas. And that, that's really the key message there. Open up your brain to new ideas. Expand your culture. That's the sign I have at my house. I acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. People, when they're walking their dogs and just walking past my property, stop and look. That fence fell down a few months ago, so I screwed it to my letterbox. So it's, it's there now. Um, do something big, so I dug out the nature strip and planted fresh fruit and vegetables, well not fruit, um, vegetables and herbs for all my neighbours. It was an absolute stunning success until that council said, get rid of it, Brad. I said, okay. But it was, a, it was an outstanding success and it just brought a heap of us together really easy, really quickly. Nobody could believe I was doing it and saying, take whatever you want. Whatever you want, take. And people started dropping stuff off more than they were taking. 
set yourself a big target. So I just, that's 150 walks in Victoria, I just said, okay, I'll do them all. I'm not going to do them all, I'll do them all by bike and public transport, and I'll never buy a thing except um, tickets on buses and trains. So that, did all that. You can set yourself a big target. You don't need to do what you're doing now. Your whole world can expand. Out to Heidelberg and Frankston and Mount Martha and places like that. Be true to yourself. You know, you'll hear that. And what does it really mean? It means to listen to your heart. Follow your instincts. Trust your judgement. You'll all know that. You'll all know when you've been in those situations where your heart's just pumping away, banging, telling you to do something. To do something special. To stand up when everyone else is sitting down. To step forward when everyone's standing still. When there's a climate emergency. Walk forward. Don't turn around and face the other way. Eco Baron. That's my Walter White shot. Any of you guys? That looks a bit like him, doesn't it? Anyway. If you don't know that TV show, that's fine. But what I encourage young environmentalists to do is um, jump aboard an MBA rather than, than their environmental course. Because environmental courses is just natural, it's nature. We can, we can do that stuff because we have, we have natural abilities in the environment. But I tell you what, a CEO can do in five minutes what's taken me ten years to do. If you're the guy making the decisions and you control the reins and have the power, you can do this stuff. So if you're in a position that gets to make decisions, make those ones. Uh, this, is, this is a question I usually put to people. I want you to think about this and what do you choose? Do you choose freedom? And these, these things are at opposite ends. Freedom or happiness. I added one in just a couple, about half an hour before I came here and I added power or love because that's a central theme of my book, The Two Opposing Forces. One kills the other. And one allows the other to survive. Which one do you choose out of which each set? Just think about it. <laughs> Population growth. <laughs> There's too many of us. Don't give up. I don't care what's thrown at you. I don't care what you're reading. I don't care how bad you're feeling. Get up out of bed. Throw those covers off, swing your feet out onto the deck, stand up, step forward, write your placards, write your letters, come forward, go to work, do your thing with love and passion every day. Don't, do not give up. There's so much bad information out there, but don't give up. We stand together. And after you've done all that, you've got to slow down. That's just me having a little nap on the top of Mount Cope. If any of you are familiar with the high country, yeah, slow down. In order for us to speed up, we need to slow down. Because we, what we can do is the wrong thing. A lot of people say to me, oh, it's better than nothing, Brett. And I say, no, it's not. You need to think through what you're doing. Of all of those things I've just shown you, which is the best one? If you could only do one thing in the next year, which one would you choose? Which would have the most impact to address the thing that we agreed at the start that we needed to address? Which, which would it be? What's the one thing? Anyone want to throw a suggestion at me? Yeah, to get started. But let's say you, you, you got started. What, what would you do? What would be the first one? I think for me it's the actually taking action with politicians and with companies and things like that. Because you can, often when you buy, if you buy sustainably, you actually have to be probably wealthier or more disciplined to do that. But if you can make someone like take the poison off the shelf or make sure that the ingredients going into whatever you're buying are sustainable, then everybody benefits, not just you. Mm. Yeah, so you influence the influencers, you become an influencer, you become the person who makes the decisions, that's even, even better. One of the best things you can do is every dollar that leaves your pocket, use it effectively. If you're propping up the existing system, 
more of the stuff that we don't like continues to occur. Does that make sense? Now, it's sort of 20 past seven and it's part two. I could fly through this. Do you want me to fly through it? Do you need a breather? You're good? Okay, I'm gonna fly through this really, really quickly, okay, because I do wanna give us a little bit of time for a bit of a chat. I need a bit of a breather. That's, it's always confronting for me as well. Okay, so this, this breaks my heart to talk about this stuff and I haven't even talked about the problems. Uh, but let's go. Um, top one's a vegan diet. So this, now we're getting into year two. I oh, feel really fast. Um, we have a saying in my house, um, sneegans. We're, some of us are sneegans. My son, my youngest son, he's 16. He's certainly a sneegan. He loves bacon and he loves cheese and stuff like that. So we call him a sneaky vegan, you know. So, and I, I hate all the, the labels anyway. And vegan, schmegan, whatever. Healthy, sustainable diet. You don't need a label. Divest from your health fund. Take on another big challenge. Figure out how you, what you need to really survive. Okay? Go beyond. Get some more real skills. Things that would be useful in a doomsday bunker. When you come out to my little bunker. How can you help me? Do you know how to do anything? You know? Never buy fake wood. Oh, there's some fake wood. If you never buy fake wood, you'll probably never go into Ikea. This is made in Denmark. It's, it's just, it's pollution just sitting on the shelves. That's where that EPA car should be going out to Ikea and just putting a big padlock around the door. Don't come in, because it's polluting. Avoid pharmacies, doctors and supplements. Unless, of course, you're sick, really sick. Don't drink coffee, avoid snack food and lollies. Smash your comfort zone. Do something different, if it's to tomorrow or next week. That's where, the, that's where you really get value. You smash out of your comfort zone, that thing that you're just doing all day, every day. That's what's got us to where we are today. We're all just hanging out, waiting for someone to do something. But that's not happening. Spread the word. And spread it, your word. Don't spread someone else's word. Take your message. Wear your heart on your sleeve. Because this shit what other people think. Tell your message with love and pride, compassion, care and forgiveness. But listen to other people as well. Unless they're stupid. Never gamble. Find a blind spot in your life and deal with it. And you, you'll know what they are. If you read my book, you'll know what mine are. Incorporate mind and body discipline. You know, you've probably heard of mindfulness. It's really, really important. And just to, just to reflect on that, the, the guy who was originally called No Impact Man, I'm just called Zero Impact Man, I'm different, probably a bit better. Uh, his name is Colin Bevan. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, his name is Colin Bevan, he's from the USA. And his latest book is about that. You cannot go down this path and not get to the sort of mindfulness, joy, happy, freedom sort of state of mind. It just happens. Incorporate passive sport in your life. You know, just things like Tai Chi and stuff like that. Do something with other people. Always be with other people if you can. Divest your insurance. So if you've gone to the problem, the trouble of divesting your superannuation fund, divest your insurance. Divest all of those things. Every little bit of money that you have that's sitting in some corporate account, if that corporation is invested in fossil fuels, you're invested in fossil fuels. Live without heating and cooling. You need some beanies and sleeping bags, uh, but my zero star home, <laughs> we, haven't used, uh, we haven't used any heating for a long time. Uh, it's kind of fun wearing beanies. You don't have to do that, it's, um, it's kind of cool though. It's in year two anyway, so you've got a year off. <laughs> Use cash wherever possible, and that's not about conspiracy theories, but uh, I don't want anything tracked. You don't want to be part of the electronic world if you can avoid it. There's a whole lot of reasons. Um, I think George Orwell talked about it in his, his book, 1984. Uh, save like a demon. If you've got cash resources, you've got more freedom to act. And you can give money, if you can't do it yourself, you can give money to someone who can. Like Sea Shepherd. They can go out and ram a boat that's 
you know, taking whales out of the ocean unnecessarily. Isn't that so cool? It just, you know that t-shirt that says, here's a list of boats we rammed. Here's a list of boats we talked to. Do you want to wear that t-shirt? We asked them to stop. Yeah. Don't work. Have simple fun. Eat less. Vote for the future. If the party hasn't got a good climate policy, don't, don't vote for them. Uh, work less. Share your job around. Eat seasonally. So it's apple season now. Eat apples. Once apple season's over, stop eating apples. Wait for the next. It's, and then there's that joy and the surprise of getting a nice crisp apple in apple season. They don't grow all year. Plan your future. Pursue a sustainable hobby. Never purchase anything in a packet. Compost your sewage. Disconnect your gas. Use the waste of others. Learn to share your wealth. It's a big step. Can you share? And wealth's not just money. So I'm sharing something that's taken me decades. I'm sharing something with you tonight. It's part of my wealth. Always go harder, faster, longer in anything that you do. And you'll do that naturally if you're passionate about it. That's why I encourage you, just jump on board the thing that you care about. Do it in a sustainable way. Become a warrior of your chosen discipline. Discipline again. It's, it's the key. Don't be drawn into the argument. Don't find yourself in a pub or a coffee shop or wherever it is you go to talk to other people. Don't find yourself in one of those crazy climate arguments. I've had so many of them and they get you absolutely nowhere. I always walk out and I feel, I feel like those people have taken something from me. Don't let them take it from you. If you get stuck in one of those situations, ask a question. Just ask another question. Ask another question. Learn to think. Lift your own body weight. And you'll need that when you're down in my doomsday bunker. It's a fair way below the ground. Uh, become one with nature. We are nature. We're not city dwellers. This, does, this whole city thing doesn't work. It is not sustainable. It doesn't work. Stop talking shit. Remove... And <laughs> yeah, we've all done that. And we continue to do it. Remove inconsistencies in your life. And you'll know what they are if you've been paying attention as we go through it. Or as you sit down and reflect over the next few weeks. Grow up. Just grow up. Take responsibility. Don't expect someone else to do it for you. Speak with courage. When I've spoken with courage, and I'll probably get into trouble for a few things tonight, but uh, whatever. This is so important to me. It's, and I believe it's important to all of you guys. That's why you're here tonight. Uh, listen more than you speak. Follow your food to its source. Yeah, find out. Meet the farmer. Buy single ingredient products only. Learn to do without. Learn how to love yourself. It's, this, that one should almost be step number one. You know, if I had you out in my commune, that's what we'd be doing for the first day. Stripping you down and building you back up. Love yourself. You're all beautiful. You've all got wonderful, warm hearts. You know, you all care. You all care about the same things that I care about. And if, you, if I pulled away all the layers, we'd probably find we had pretty much the same set of values. The same set. And we all have the same survival needs. Say yes to love and no to greed. Thank you for watching. This workshop has been provided by the City of Port Phillip to support you to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, water use and waste. For further information, please visit sustainableportphillip.com.